Chapter 18 The Bitter Tree He almost shouted out loud, seeing the terrible state that poor Mrs. Griffin was in. She was staring up at him with wild eyes, her hair pulled out in clawfuls, her face purple with bruises. A foul rag had been stuffed in her mouth. Harvey carefully removed it, and she began to speak, her voice in a hoarse whisper. Thank you, my sweet. Thank you, she said. But, oh, you shouldn't have come back. It's too dangerous here. Who did this to you? Jive and Rictus. But he ordered it, didn't he? Harvey said, helping her up. Don't tell me he's dead, because I know that doesn't matter. Hood's here in the house, isn't he? Yes, she said, holding on to him as she climbed up out of the box. Yes, he's here, but not in the way you think. She began to weep, the tears clogging her words. It's all right, Harvey said. Everything's going to be all right. Her fingers went up to her face and touched the tears. I thought, I thought I'd never cry again, she said. Look what you've done. I'm sorry, said Harvey. Oh no, my sweet, don't be sorry. It's wonderful. She smiled through her tears. You've broken his curse on me. What curse? Oh, it's a long story. I want to hear. I was the first child who ever came to Hood's house, she said. That was many, many years ago. I was nine when I first walked up the front path. I'd run away from home, you see. Why? My cat had died, and my father refused to buy me another. And what do you think Rictus gave me the very day I arrived? Three cats, said Harvey. You know how this house works, don't you? Harvey nodded. It gives you whatever you think you want. And I wanted cats and a home and... What? Another father. She shivered with fear, remembering the horror. I met Hood that night. At least, I heard his voice. Stucat had come to her feet, and she paused to stoop and gathered the creature into her arms. Where did you hear him? Harvey asked. In the attic at the top of the house, and he said to me, If you stay here, forever and ever, you'll never die. You'll grow old, but you'll live until the end of time, and never weep again. And that's what you wanted? It was stupid, but yes, I did. I was afraid, you see. Afraid of being put into the ground like my cat. A new wave of tears came running down her pale cheeks. I was running away from death. Straight into its house, Harvey said. Oh no, child, Mrs. Griffin said. Hood isn't death. She wiped away her tears so as to see Harvey more clearly. Death is a natural thing. Hood isn't. I would welcome death now, like a friend I'd driven away from my door. I've seen too much, my sweet. Too many seasons. Too many children. Why didn't you try to stop him? I have no power against him. All I could do was give the children who came here as much happiness as I knew how. So how old are you? Harvey asked her. Who knows, she replied, laying her cheek against two cats fur. I grew up and old in a matter of days, but then the passage of time seemed to lose its hold on me. Sometimes I've wanted to ask one of the children, what year is it in the world outside? I can tell you. Don't, she said, putting her finger to her lips. I don't want to know how the years have flown. It would hurt too much. What do you want, then? To die, she said with a little smile. To slip out of the skin and go to the stars. Is that what happens? It's what I believe, she said. But Hood won't let me die. Not ever. That'll be his revenge on me for helping you to escape. He already had Blue Cat murdered for showing you the way out. Hood's going to let you go, Harvey said. I promise, I'm going to make him. She shook her head. You're so brave, my sweet, she said. But he won't let any of us go. There's such a terrible emptiness inside him. He wants to fill it with souls 
but it's a pit, a bottomless pit. And you're both heading for it, said an oily voice. The speaker was Mar. She was oozing down the stairs. We've been looking for you up and down, she said to Harvey. You'd better come with me, child. She extended her arms in Harvey's direction. He remembered all too well her transforming touch. Come, come, she said. I might still get you out of trouble if you let me make something humble of you. He likes humble things, does Mr. Hood. Bees, worms, scabby dogs. Come to me, child. Quickly! Harvey looked around the cellar. There were no other ways out. If he was to get Mrs. Griffin up into the sun, it had to be by way of the stairs, and Mar was standing in front of them. He took a step in her direction. She smiled toothlessly. Good, child, good, she said. Don't, Mrs. Griffin said. She'll hurt you. Hush, woman, Mar said. We're going to have to nail that lid down next time. Her greasy green eyes swiveled back in Harvey's direction. He knows what's good for him. Don't you, boy? Harvey didn't reply. He simply kept walking towards Mar, whose fingers seemed to be growing like a snail's horns, reaching out to fix upon his face. You've been such an obedient boy, Mar went on. Maybe I won't turn you into a worm after all. What would you like to be? Tell me. Tell me what's in your heart. Never mind my heart, Harvey said, reaching out towards Mar. What about yours? A puzzled look came over Mar. Mine? she said. Yes, said Harvey. What do you dream of being? I never dream, she said defiantly. You should try it, Harvey told her. If you can change me into a worm or a bat, what could you do for yourself? The defiance on her face became bafflement, and the bafflement turned to panic. Her outstretched fingers began to retreat into themselves. Harvey reached for them like lightning, however, interweaving his fingers with hers. What do you want to be? He said to her, Think! She started to struggle, and he felt her magic surging through her fingers into his, attempting to work some change on him. But he didn't want to be a vampire bat any more, and he certainly didn't want to be a worm. He was quite happy to be himself. The magic, therefore, had no hold on him. Instead, it flowed back into Mar, who began to shake as though she was being dipped in icy water. What? are you doing she demanded tell me what's in your heart he said returning her invitation i'm not telling you she replied still trying to rest her fingers free of his but she was not used to having her victims resist her this way her muscles were soft and flabby she pulled and pulled but she couldn't escape him leave me alone she said if you harm me, Mr. Hood will have your head. I'm not harming you, Harvey replied. I'm just letting you have your dreams, the way you let me have mine. I don't want them, she yelled, struggling more than ever. He wouldn't let her go. Instead, he drew closer to her, as if to wrap her up in his arms. She started to spit at him, great globs of slime but he wiped them from his face and kept approaching her. No, she began to murmur, no. But she couldn't keep the magic she had intended from him from working on her own skin and bones. Her fat face began to soften and run like melting wax. Her body sagged in its ragged coat and a greenish gruel began to pour out onto the floor. Oh, she sobbed, you damnable child. What dream was this? Harvey wondered, that was turning Mar to mush. She was growing smaller all the time, her clothes dropping off her as her body shrank, her voice becoming thin. It would only be moments before she disappeared altogether. What do you dream about? Harvey said as Mar's fingers ran away between his own like brackish water. I dream of 
nothing, Ma replied, her eyes sinking back into her disintegrated skull. And that's what I've become. She was almost lost in the folds of her clothes. Nothing, she said again. She was no more than a dirty puddle now, a puddle with a fading voice. Nothing. Then she was gone, devoured by her own magic. You did it, Mrs. Griffin said. Child, you did it. One down, three to go, Harvey said. Three? Rictus jive and hood himself. You're forgetting Karna. Is he still alive? Mrs. Griffin nodded. I'm afraid I've heard his shrieks every night. He wants revenge. And I want my life back, Harvey said, taking her by the arm and escorting her, still carrying Stewcat to the bottom of the stairs. I'm going to get it, Mrs. Griffin. Whatever it takes, I'm going to get it. Mrs. Griffin glanced back at the heap of clothes that marked the place where Mar had gone to nothing. Maybe you can, she said, astonishment in her voice. Of all the children who have come here, maybe you're the one who can beat Hood at his own game.